The body is that of an infant, but the face has already assumed the cares of the world. This is one of the world's great paintings. It comes from Mount Athos, the great treasure store of ancient Christian art. The 20 fortress-like monasteries and many dependencies which make up the independent monastic state of Athos preserve an artistic heritage which has lasted on the holy mountain for over a thousand years. Jutting out into the northern Aegean Sea, the holy mountain's 2,000 meters dominate one of the oldest Christian centers on earth. The painting of the images of their faith, whether on parchment, paper, wood or plaster, is a way of life for Athenite monks which still exists today. The use of egg-based paint dates back to before the Byzantine Empire. Here, the technique is being used to create portable icons on wooden panels. These two brothers, two of the 1,500 or so monks who inhabit Athos today, are producing faithful duplicates, copies of great icons from the 13th century. They will be sold to Orthodox churches in Europe or America and the money used to support themselves. The icon painter, like a musician with his notes, should conform to strict guidelines. An icon is not simply a religious picture. An icon only becomes an icon if its subject is derived from a spiritual vision. Many believe that the gauge of an artist's inspiration should be a total freedom of expression. But the icon painter must not interpret in that sense. His art is a formal language. To allow personal feelings would be to deviate, to distort the original vision or image. It is therefore the very nature of the icon which determines its stylistic qualities and accounts for its abstraction, the calligraphic drawing, the rhythm, the color, Naturalism, as we know it, must not exist. Sadly, the ravages of time and Mother Nature have taken their toll on the mountain, and very little of the earliest painting survives. Earthquakes have cracked the walls, and fire can destroy complete buildings. From the 16th century, the monks started overpainting, obliterating much of the early work. Some of the most precious panel icons are hidden behind heavy silver covers, with just the faces in view. And also, after many centuries, varnish blackens and is in need of the restorer's attention. Nevertheless, enough masterpieces remain, like this 600-year-old icon of St. John of Damascus, giving us a unique record of a culture rooted in another age. Unlike Western art, Byzantine painting produced few named artists. The icon painters rarely signed their work. The notion of an artist identifying himself in Byzantine art is very different from that of Western artists after the Renaissance. In the East, in the Eastern Christian world, the artist felt himself part of a tradition, and he felt that he was expressing the values of the society and of the spirituality he belonged to. Uh, as an artist, he tried to show his own creativity 
working within the canons and within the tradition of his faith and of his culture. The importance of his signature was not in terms of marketing. If he was a famous painter and if he was renowned, his name would live in the memory of the people among which he lived and in, uh, in whose towns he painted their churches or in whose monasteries he painted. In the heart of the holy mountain is the village of Caries. At its heart is the Protaton. Of all the great churches of Athos, this is the greatest. Originally built in the 9th century as the central place of worship for the hermits who were scattered all over the peninsula, the Protaton has grown with the community and is its oldest church. Despite a rather plain and unassuming exterior, this monument has preserved within it some of the most impressive and striking Byzantine art. The cycles of murals on these walls are the work of one man. He is known as Emmanuel Pancelinos and is believed to have been a professional painter, not a monk. Pancelinos, who was one of the great masters of the early 14th century, is known to us by tradition. There have been countless arguments as to where he lived. In the past, his date varied between the 12th century and the 16th century. That is because his name was, came down to us through the tradition, through legend. And it is a measure of his skill and of his mastery that his name survived, while those of countless others, some of them could have been every bit as good as he was, were lost to us. The Protaton is unusual in that it is a basilica with large flat wall surfaces. All other Athenite churches are domed buildings. Pancelinos, the painter who gave us the Christ child in contemplation, was able to adapt the layout of his images with stunning results. None are more impressive than this narrative cycle of Christ's life on earth. It spreads over the massive walls and differs from most such cycles in that it includes some of the lesser events which are not normally painted. Working on dry plaster, rather than the wet plaster technique of the frescoist, he used a team of helpers, and it would have taken him at least a year to complete the decoration of this church. It is thought he came from Thessaloniki, the great Byzantine center of Macedonia, which was second in importance only to the capital, Constantinople. These figures represent the mythical spirits of the River Jordan. They show how Pancelinos reached back to find inspiration in the art of the Greco-Roman world.
Although the existence of these beautiful murals has long been known, this is the first time they've been seen in light such as this and from an angle such as this. Normally, the icons and murals are seen in natural light or semi-darkness. There is no electricity here. Only candlelight aids the viewer. So portable generators, scaffolding and film lighting had to be brought in. For the first time, scaffolding was erected in the Holy Church of the Protaton. And oil lamps, chandeliers and portable paintings were removed to expose the painted surfaces so that the camera could look at them head on and look at the artist's work as the artist who was painting it was seeing it. To the monks and Orthodox Christians, it is the saints who provide a special inspiration. They have reached the ultimate. Two types are strongly featured by Pancelinos, monastic saints and warrior saints. It was through the bravery and sacrifice of these warriors that the Christian empire and Athos was physically defended. We can see how Pancelinos achieves a lifelike or three-dimensional quality in his work. The armor is thick and the soldier saints noble. This is a pillar saint, a monk who actually perched for years on a column, exposed to the elements. Monastic saints support orthodoxy by providing moral guidance. Pancelinos depicts them as mystics. Visionary ascetics, great thinkers, great poets, great spiritual athletes of orthodoxy. When painting a figure of his faith, Pancelinos would take into account the legend surrounding the man. Here he has captured the spirit and mood of Saint Paul of Cerro Potamo, one of the founding fathers of the Holy Mountain. Pancelinos worked on the theory that Paul was the son of a Byzantine emperor. His claims to the throne were ended when his father was deposed and his enemies made him a eunuch. He became an Athenite monk and this monastery is named after him. Here we clearly see how Pancelinos showed his lack of masculinity by presenting him almost beardless, yet with the wrinkles of an old man. The painters of Athos, like the monks, have benefited from the silence, tranquility, and sheer magnificent beauty of the holy mountain. Pancelinos shows us a higher degree of naturalism than had hitherto been seen in painting. It, he is more concerned with three-dimensionality, with weight and volume and with depth. But of course he's still a master of the Byzantine tradition. While Macedonian painting of the 13th and 14th centuries is well documented in terms of mural painting, little is known of portable panel icons. A notable exception is this monumental icon of St. Peter now in the Dumbarton Oaks Museum in Washington. It attests the rich heritage of antiquity present in Byzantine art. In contrast, this earlier panel icon of St. Peter in the Protaton shows the other main current of Byzantine art, 
the abstract beauty devoid of sensuality, which finds its perfect expression in the art of the 11th and 12th centuries. Pancelinos was a master of robust painting. His brush follows the contours of the human form with often sensuous strokes. Pancelinos himself painted all the key scenes and figures. Having drawn a basic composition of the entire iconographic scheme, he would delegate general work to his team. At the end, he would add the finishing touches or necessary corrections. This profile of Paul the Apostle shows another aspect of Pancelinos, the innovator. Until his time, the only face shown regularly in profile was that of Judas, the traitor looking away from the viewer. But Pancelinos used profiles and other unusual facial angles at will. Such was the measure of his confidence and talent. He also had a tremendous eye for detail. Even the most mundane objects of daily life are included. The drapery we see suspended here signifies that this is an interior. Once it was thought that the Byzantines couldn't draw perspective properly. In fact, it is a deliberate style, one which is directly opposite to the Western treatment. This is illustrated by the work of a near contemporary of Pancelinos, the Italian Renaissance artist Giotto. Giotto also demonstrates another difference. The open mouth conveys emotion in realistic terms. But Pancelinos uses exaggerated rhetorical gestures to suggest emotion. The faces are serene. Jesus, 
Although the nature of the man behind the name Panselinos is shrouded in legend, his work is hailed by those who followed him. In this humble, nondescript cell in the village of Caries, lived and worked an 18th century monk, Dionysius of Forna. His home and its adjoining chapel is cared for by one of the Holy Mountain's oldest residents. Although a painter in his own right, Dionysius is better known for his writing than his artistry. He was something of an early art expert, and Panselinos appears in his Painter's Manual, the earliest known written work about the techniques and iconography of Byzantine painting. Dionysius said of Panselinos, he shone in his artistry so that his brilliance exceeded that of the moon. And he eclipsed with his miraculous art all painters, both ancient and modern. <laughs> 